teach mathematics. I do teach an online course currently in um, multivariable calculus, and I'm developing another course um, to be online for differential equations. To be honest, I really hadn't thought I ever could teach online in a way that I'd feel satisfied with uh, because I have pretty high standards for my students' learning and I really enjoy the face-to-face -face environment. So I don't want to give it up entirely, even now. But I really um, thought about it when I was request it was requested that I consider putting together an online course for multivariable calculus uh, back in 2011, I guess, and maybe 2012. <laughs> One way or the other, I um, thought about it long and hard, and I realized that there were, was a way that I'd be satisfied, and that would be only if I could record my lectures for every face-to-face -face class. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, I used some with the smart recorder software that comes with a smart board, and I recorded everything that I wrote. And in the voice, I, I had a wireless mic, so I was able to record my explanations of everything. And that, that was raw video that I then took and processed with Camtasia put in a table of contents for each video so the students could quickly get to each example and various topic. And so basically, it was able to put my whole course from the fall semester of 2012 into my online course for the spring of 2013. I think it's real important that we make a clear organization for our video content. I, you do hear a number of different perspectives on this. They, uh, there are people out there who think no video should be longer than five minutes, for example. I did not find that workable. I do have some videos that are short and sweet, those extra examples I throw in here and there. But um, in calculus, multivariable calculus especially, some problems take 20 minutes to go through one problem. So what I chose to do was in producing the videos of my lectures, I tried to keep most of the lectures together unless I broke a concept in parts and then I might take two lectures and put them together to form a coherent whole. But I'd use a table of contents so that students could quickly jump from piece to piece of my lecture or watch just one component of it for 10, 15 minutes and then you know, have to go and come back and be able to quickly find their place again. It also helps if students want to rewatch a certain portion to be able to use that table of contents to locate their spot within the video. On my webpage then within the course, um, I break down and explain both um, the topic for that video and how long that whole video is, including all the parts. Because I think it's important that students have a sense for how long am I going to be sitting here if I'm going to watch this component, this topic. And of course, it's usually less than 50 minutes, less than a regular class time, but still it's nice for them to know. If this is a 30-minute commitment or a 40 minutes or an 18-minute commitment, it, it sort of gives them a sense for, for that ahead of time. And the students were, ve I've been very positive about it ever since. Uh, I had students um, in a couple different semesters tell me that it was just like being in class. They even were shouting out answers and felt like they were there. Um, others that, you know, basically just, you know, shared how much they appreciate the videos and telling each other, you know, make sure you watch the videos. So I think many online classes out there, people use other people's videos or they might not have much video content. And I just couldn't see myself doing that. I think, you know, there's different styles, but for me, I felt much better knowing that my students could be expected to uh, know what I, ex so that they would know what I expected uh, in the online class, just like the face-to-face -face students would. And perhaps even better, because they could stop it and go back and take another look at it uh, and come back multiple times. So that's been something that's changed my teaching, even in my face-to-face -face classes, because I've continued to record all of my lectures. And although I don't produce them every day, I make them available to the students so they can come back in and watch them again. Or if they miss class, they can watch the video. So that's been something that's sort of transformed my face-to-face -face classes as well. One thing that I use in this multivariable calculus class is a Java applet that I created as part of a National Science Foundation grant project. Um, it's designed to help Students um, visualize multivariable calculus concepts, which are three-dimensional a lot of times. Uh, some of them are two-dimensional, but they're graphical and dynamic. Uh, the course covers um, motion on the, in the plane and in space. And so if you can't um, see the motion happening, you just see a picture in the book, it really isn't helping enough, I think, to help students master what's really going on. So in addition to creating a 
applet, uh, visualization software uh, that students can use and are required to use to visually verify homework problems, making sure that things really do work the way that they're supposed to once they found their answer on paper. Um, I also have them complete currently for visual concept explorations. And these have the student actually um, playing with the concepts visually by varying parameters and moving things around and answering questions that are aimed at helping them discover some of the relationships that are key in, in involving those concepts. Um, one of them has to do with velocity and acceleration vectors in motion in space or in the plane and how they interact with each other. It's really hard to get students to make those connections if they're not really just sort of playing with uh, the concepts visually as that tool allows. And I've really found a lot of success uh, in students also reporting that they found that very helpful in their learning. So that's one major component that I had in place before I volunteered to teach the course. And I felt, and I still feel, really gives uh, an extra strength to the course. The students are always talking about how much uh, they use the CalcPlot 3D applet in the online class and re recommending it to each other. I've also uh, done a lot of work developing my own open educational um, web work problems. Uh, it's an online homework system that's free and open source. I can really get a sense for how well the students are grasping a number of the concepts. So, you know, that's something I don't have to do a lot of grading on, but I have to do a lot of coaching and um, sort of helping them make it through some of the sets, and there are problems I feel really good about. I'm able to get the students to think a little bit beyond the, the standard skill and drill problems, and they, the, the problems complement what's in the book, require the students to synthesize some of the concepts or ask them conceptual con uh, questions that get them asking me questions. Uh, it really helped to promote discussion, either, even among the, the students themselves. Uh, in addition to that, I mean, I've just done a whole lot of things to try to make the course as good as I could. I was talking with a colleague of mine, Nita Primo, um, and she was sharing how much uh, value she attributed to discussions within the online course. And um, she was shared with me the, the research that uh, has been done showing that student performance in a course and retention in a course that's online is always much improved by increased uh, communication between the students as well as with a professor. And so I really felt it was important to incorporate some kind of regular discussion component into the class. And so I've done that and I feel like it really has helped. Uh, it is an extra layer that's not in my face-to-face -face class. But I really have seen, especially in the uh, discussion forums I've created where the students ask each other questions and answer each other's questions, I've seen a lot of students may really make use of it. And I think that's really in incorporated or created a, a community within the class which wouldn't have been facilitated in the, any other way I could see. Throughout the semester I give them a week's discussion topic which is for them to ask a question and then answer someone else's question and that's the requirement and the best students answer lots of questions and maybe ask lots of questions. Uh, those have been real successful. Uh, the other um, couple that I felt really good about, um, one in particular ask the students to come up with applications for the dot product and the cross product that we didn't talk about in our discussion in class, but which they've seen in another course or which they've looked up and found online. And that's been a really rich discussion too. You get lots of really interesting applications that come in and show how useful these basic vector concepts are that we've talked about and learned. Um, I have them at near the end of the semester there's a discussion topic which they're asked to give feedback on the course and I give them specific questions to address. You know, what did you think about the applet? Was it helpful? What did you think about web work? You know, those problems, you know, how much did they help you or, you know, what, is, what are your feelings about it? So that's been real beneficial to me and I think it's nice to give the students a chance to really give that feedback as well. The way I guide students in completing the explorations is usually to start by talking about the concepts in class and we often actually have talked about the concepts that they're going to explore enough that they could get the pretest questions correct. Not always quite enough because sometimes they're not able to quite master those pretest questions. But then the exploration gets them thinking and going and looking at specific examples or playing with in this case, two vectors and seeing what the dot product value is and how it varies depending on the angle between the two vectors. 
And then as they answer those questions in the exploration, hopefully they're now making the connection how to answer the pretest questions correctly. The post-test then measures how much improvement they've made in their understanding through the exploration. And after the exploration has been turned in, the deadline's passed, then we come back in class and talk about what did you learn? What, what, you know, what happened here? What, what, you know, what causes with the velocity and acceleration vectors? What um, did you notice about the relationship between those two vectors when the speed was constant? And usually someone has caught that understanding that that only happens when the velocity and acceleration vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other all the time. You have constant speed. And we talk about why and we draw some pictures and, and discuss that. So I think that's an important part of this, but I'm not necessarily in the explorations giving them a lot of extra help along the way unless they ask specific questions and you know, are understanding what they're being asked to do. But afterwards, I think it's important to tie it together and make sure they came to the right conclusions. It's easier in the face-to-face -to, -face to do that discussion component, but I've recorded the discussion component and put it in the uh, online course to show up a day after the um, exploration has been complete, completed by the students. So they still are able to uh, benefit from my sort of um, summary of what they were supposed to have learned. Uh, they're not able to maybe respond in the face-to-face, back-and-forth way. But I have incorporated actually, um, I think it's one discussion topic, which is actually this week, where they're di discussing, they're talking about the three explorations they've done so far and what they've learned from them. So it gives the students to, a chance to really talk back and forth with each other about the specific details that they hadn't realized before they did the exploration in which they now see more clearly. And it's been exciting to read what they have to say. So at this level, the students actually often are more technology savvy, uh, a little bit more comfortable, I think, with an online course. Although the content itself is daunting, as you, as you point out. I think the videos that I am able to give them and tell them about in the first introduction video that I make for the course, um, I, I think put some of their minds at ease. I've had a number of the students tell me they really have enjoyed it. It's been better for them than a previous course that they took where they didn't have the videos. So, <clears throat> you know, that's one aspect of it. I do have an introductory video that basically gives them a little tour of the course, tells them about what's in it. That's incorporated into a an introduction page, which has my, my face. Um, and I guess the, the video is the one place I actually show up in a video. Usually my videos don't have my face appearing, so I try to at least there welcome them to the class and so on. I email them uh, a lot right at the beginning, uh, try to give them some of the overview, what's expected in the preview week, and you know what they need to do to get ready for the course. Because I use so many different pieces of technology, require them to submit their homework assignments as a single PDF. They have to learn how to do some of that. So I try to help them um, develop those skills in the first week with some really easy assignments, which may be challenging for some of them. And they keep asking me questions on email, and I try to respond to those uh, as quickly as I can. So those are things I do. I still think it's, that's an area which is still a challenge compared to a face-to-face -face class. Uh, when you see the students face-to-face, -face, you can remind them of the things they need to do. Um, you can also give the lecture uh, three days before the assignment is due, whereas in the online class, they watch the lecture the night <laughs> that the assignment is due, which doesn't help them quite as much. So I'm still struggling with trying to find a way to get students to watch the video and give themselves time to do the assignment after that. Uh, another piece of technology that I've gotten students to use is some kind of a PDF printer. And I'm still looking for a better option there, but I've used something called PDF Creator that just acts like a printer that the students can basically take all of the uh, homework sheets and different printouts that they have that they're supposed to submit for one assignment, and they can put it together into a single PDF document. They may have a scanner, ideally. I think that's the easiest way. Um, but if they don't have a scanner, I have a number of the students who just take a photo of the pages. I try to tell them to use a, a bright light source because otherwise it's hard for me to see. But if they take a photo of it and then print it to this PDF creator, it becomes a PDF and can be incorporated into one document. Uh, they also use the uh, browser to print from my app, my uh, CalcPlot 3D applet, and be able to, uh, and they're able to put those together into one PDF as well. And that makes my job of grading, which I use a tablet PC for, a whole lot easier. So that's a big piece of technology that's really not that big, but it makes I think the course a lot more efficient.
So I do a lot of grading of written work as well. When I first considered putting this course together, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to, that somehow it would be too hard for me or for the students to uh, have them do as much written work as I have my face-to-face -face students do. But it turns out I have them do the same number of assignments, uh, the same written assignments, basically, as I would give to my face-to-face -face class. I have them do and submit, and I'm able to grade them on the computer, which I love because I can erase my red marks and make new ones, and uh, it makes it really convenient to grade in a consistent way. I do believe strongly in the need for proctoring um, a good portion of the grade. And so in my course, the final exam and two of the three regular course exams are proctored. And that would require the student to either come to MCC if they're local or if they're somewhere else, somewhere else in the country or the, the world, uh, they need to find a, an approved proctor, one that they submit currently to me and then I'm able to contact and try to double check the identity for. And then that person will ID the student and give them a certain portion of time and uh, you know, be with them while they're taking the exam to be sure they're not using uh, the internet or their phone or some other tool that they're not allowed to do, they're not allowed to use. I actually, something else I have the students do in this course that I've really been excited about is I have the students themselves create videos. Um, they have to teach essentially one of the examples from the book, uh, an exercise from the book, and explain how it works and, and, and work through the problem. They get bonus points if they can show themselves writing it out as they talk about it, um, or if they use the applet to visually verify their results within the video, or just do an extraordinary clear job, uh, they get some bonus points. And it's really been a, a really exciting assignment that I was a little bit, um, I don't know, unsure of how well it would be received by the students if they think it was too much. But it turned out the students loved it. Um, some of them, a lot of the students have said it was their favorite assignment in the course or assignments. I give it two different places and uh, they recommended I do it more often. So the, although that's not necessarily happened yet because of how long it takes me to grade them and watch all of them, I've really been excited about that also. Seeing the students share their own uh, learning with the other students and with me. And they've shared that the most important aspect of that was not so much watching their classmates videos, but how well they had to learn the material themselves for the example that they presented and that they really were excited about that. And of course they learned some skills in presentation and using some kind of software to record themselves and they use their iPad or their iPhone sometimes and it all you know, works out at the stage. It's really exciting what they can do.